Hello guys, I have no clue if you see me right now or if you can or cannot see me right now. This is a test. Um, well, it's not just a test. I'm trying to do my favorite perfumes for the month of November on a new setting with a different camera setting, uh, live streaming in the highest possible quality I can at the moment. So um, I'm going to try to update myself on my computer here because I got to try to figure out if there's a chat happening or not. And if there is, I is going to see what you guys are writing. Uh, okay, I see that I'm online. <laughs> I see myself online, so all of this is a bit... Oh my god, I see you guys. Berna Barragan Cervantes, I made it, yes! Yes, 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 yes. Karel says hi, 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 hi. Monkey Cherry, hey Dacov. Joseph Therizmon, hey Dacov. Daniel, hello. G-O-L-D. Oh wait. Glasses. I need to put glasses out for you guys. So guys, are you liking this new setting? I mean, I'm experimenting with it. I think I'm hoping the quality is good. Um, I shifted my, just that you understand the technical requirements for all of this is insane. I have, I'm monitoring myself while I'm doing it. So I see myself mirrored on top of the camera, but the actual live stream is a couple of seconds, like comes after what I say. So in order to not go totally bananas while I'm looking at your chat scrolling through, I have to shift the video to the side so I don't see it on my monitor. But there's a lot of cables involved and please bear with me if there's like mistakes or technical difficulties. So Marco says, ciao bello, good to see you back. Hi Marco. Um, Daniel says, we have a public holiday here for the Melbourne Cup Horse Race. Usually I miss these because I am at work. Aww. Well, so glad you could make it, Daniel. And uh, I don't know, was what, what with the dad from down and dad? <laughs> We're enjoying the horse race. Um, Carol Laco says the color of this one is a whole lot better than the last one. Yes, I mean this is a. Uh, I mean I live streamed from my iPad uh, from my uh, iPad Mini. Now I'm live streaming from a professional camera. So I'm just hope because the thing is now I got better internet quicker internet. So that means um, that I can afford to try to push through to you guys a higher definition. This should be, I mean, it's recorded in HD. I don't know if it's live streaming in HD, but it's definitely a huge difference to, to, the, to the iPad. It's live streaming. Obviously, it's a different camera. I don't look like a potato anymore because the iPad mini camera literally like deforms your face and kind of blasts it out in the center. But anyway, long story short, Melinda said, hey, Melly, how you doing, sweetie? You look good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's get straight to it because what do we want to talk What do we want to talk about? Uh, we want to talk about uh, the favorite fragrances for the month of November. And I surprised myself. I'm literally, you know, I'm going to this video editing school. Um, and um, so, and I started off, I, I do remember myself saying, I don't know if it was in September, October, I said at the beginning of the course, I started kind of really using perfumes that I would think would not be offensive to my fellow colleagues, student mates, whatever, because I was like, I'm not going to do something too cloying. But um, as time passed by and as I kind of got to know the people more, I cared less about that. Oh, am I going to irritate them or not? So I went back to my intense fragrances. And I have to say, now that I know the people, I'm not so shy anymore with them. Like I wear any perfume I feel like in the morning. And um, nobody complained until now, so I'm I'm super thrilled about that. I think it's um, rare. I don't know, but yeah. Oh wait, more comments. Uh, Gloria says, "You looking glow? Yes, it's the lights, girl. <laughs> we have a lot of spotlights surrounding me from all over the place." Um, Cards Master says, "Hi, hi, Cards Master. Yes, intense perfumes. D I M Z H." Oh, uh, so <laughs> uh, Rob Rantoul says, Udispahan, those classmates. Oh my God. Actually, Udispahan would be the toughest one. I haven't got to that one yet, but let's get to the first one. The first one, and I'm taking these with me. So, you know, it's um, Ambre Nuit. So you weren't that far off. It is Christian Dior. Let me see if I can get as close as possible. Uh, this is probably going to be difficult for you to read. I mean, I can't even check myself on any monitor right now. So I hope you could see this. This is Ambre Nuit. There you have it. Okay. So this one is an Eau de Parfum. 
And can we zoom back and focus back to me, camera? Thank you. Okay, that took too long. It's going to be a mess to show these up close. Oh my God. So, Ambre Nuit in the morning, I have to say, look, I mean, I've been using this up. This is like one of my older uh, vials. It's a 15 milliliter version spray of these. You could buy them in Christian Dior boutiques or authorized privé reseller or not resellers, retailers. So, they come in these like, ref they're not refillable, but uh, they come in these just plain white packages because you're supposed to purchase these and put them in a really expensive rechargeable metal container which you don't have to buy because it's super expensive and these are much cheaper um ambre nuit okay let me tell you something about ambre nuit i still have to uh i have to make a review of this one it's gorgeous there, there, there there's the it's so sophisticated it's like an amber rose not sweet not dry it it flies right in between and it constantly i i mean you know when we say snake we think oh it's something bad but snakes can be strong symbols of something powerful that knows what it wants in a way so it's in a good way as if a snake would be slithering on top of water and it's moving so beautifully and it creates these on sand but the perfume isn't that hot so i don't want to reference sand but if the snake were moving on sand you would have those wonderful wavy traces of the movement of the pattern of the snake on the sand now imagine if the snake would kind of float on the water and create those movements you would have those beautiful waves that's what this feels like to me it's cool and warm at the same time it's it's amazing so i wear this a lot in the mornings and if i don't wear this if it's like a cooler morning and rainy outside then I go for Patchouli Imperial, also from Christian Dior Privé line. Let's try to do this unfocused thing again. Bear with me, guys, if it takes a long time to focus. Wait, let me cover my face. Yeah, this is not a good idea. This is really not a good idea. Come on, come on, come on. Whatever. I can't. And it um, doesn't matter. It Just trust me, okay? This was Ambre Nuit. This is Patchouli Imperial. This camera is not professional as I thought it was. It actually sucks because the auto zoom should be as quick as... And I can't say the F word because they're going to demonetize me if I do. Third perfume, also from the Christian Dior Privé range. It's three of them. Uh, new Look 1947. Now, before I get to the New Look 1947, let me tell you something about Patchouli Imperial. You could check the Patchouli Imperial review that I made on my channel. So you could kind of hear my all my thoughts on this fragrance in a review. But to add something to that, to that review, um, wearing this one in the morning when it's particularly humid and cold is mesmerizing to me in autumn because I have the feeling that Patchouli Imperial literally enhances that smell of the brown, golden, orangey leaves that are kind of wet under the rain. And you have that slight humid smell in the air, but this kind of sweetens it up. But no, it's not so sweet. I can't say it's sweet because I don't think Patrulli Imperial is sweet, really. It doesn't sweeten it up. It, it, um, it gives that smell a glow. I mean, it's kind of hard to follow me at this point, but it literally gives my mornings that are often cold and humid and you just don't want to wake up at seven in the morning and go to school and then you have patchouli imperial on yourself and all of a sudden your entire environment while everybody around you is like depressed because they had to wake up early in the morning to do whatever they got to do and you're and you're smelling this you know you have this cloud of patchouli imperial around you and all of a sudden all the brown kind of negativity starts glowing gold it's incredible so Patchouli Imperial, definitely there. Now, uh, where's my new look? 1947. New look, 1947. Now, uh, you could check out the review of this one. Also already uh, did, did dud done on my channel. Um, this one is a bit trickier because it's very floral and... I usually put this one in my bag. So it's either like Ambre Nuit or Patchouli Imperial in the morning or others, which I'll get to. 
And this one, I wouldn't put it on like right before going to school, but I would have it with me. And when I'm done, when the day is over and I'm kind of heading back home or, you know, going shopping for food or whatever I need to buy before I get home, I would freshen up with this one. It's more kind of a picker upper, <laughs> you know, type of smell during the autumn days. So for November, late afternoon, early evening, this one literally kind of because, you know, the days are getting shorter and the sun is missing. Not that I'm a huge fan of sun. It's not that I like run after the sun like a lizard. Um, I don't really. But this one gives me kind of inner sunshine. So I freshen up with this one just kind of instead of drinking a coffee, I would spray New Look 1947 um, at the end of a school day. And it would just make me feel fresh again because it's, it's, it's a long day at school. Um, towards the weekend, lately I've been really, really into... Uh, rediscovered I, I you know i love it so much but i have rediscovered and use it intensely opium pour homme the eau de parfum now this is a bigger bottle so i guess i could try ah there you go on this one it focuses now you could check out the review of the eau de parfum not the eau de toilette of opium pour homme this is the original formulation they don't sell them in these beautiful uh rechargeable um plastic what is this a scratch or a little pebble so annoyed by these. Oh, okay, no, it was just a little thing. Um, I even made a like I I made a I made um um like a fan ad campaign for this fragrance, like a one minute long thing. You could also check it out on my channel as well as the review. This one is incredible. What can I say? It's a fragrance from the '90s. It does smell very '90s, um, but the best of the '90s. It it it's just so the vanilla in here. It's savage, you know, all of the incense cloying, almost like oily, resinous smells of the original 70s opium have transformed in this opium pour homme into a dirty, savage vanilla. And it's sweet, but hot, very, very hot. And, uh, Oh, and you and you got to try the Eau de Parfum because the Eau de Toilette is more peppery. There's a lot of pepper in the Eau de Toilette. There's pepper in, uh, and black currant in the Eau de Parfum as well. But the Eau de Toilette is very strong on the pepper and black currant. The Eau de Parfum has less of that peppery, bitey opening. Uh, also anise, less of all of that and more of a savage kind of raw vanilla that burns from, from within, from down up. Oh, it really, really, really kind of lights, lights a spark. You know, it lights that fire, especially in the cold days. So this one for the weekends, you know, when you have a day off or something and you just want to enjoy yourself with yourself or with somebody else, all is possible. Uh, this is the one to go. And you know, I say fragrances have no gender. Uh, this one also, Girls and boys alike, don't matter. So that's one, two, three, four. Ah, number five, again, another a fragrance that makes the top five just as last month in October it was the same. This is the one I wear the most, still is the one I wear the most. And I have just, I mean, I've had this one since it first came out in the early 2000s. And I still have the pre reformulated both concentration and formulation. Um, and I know I should be using it sparingly, but I've just fallen anew in love with it. Um, I didn't used to use this one so often so much, but now it's the second month in a row, almost every day. Au noir. And this is the, you could see here, the Cologne. It's the Cologne concentration, the first, first formulation of it in the thinner bottle. This is 250 ml. This is a screw. Uh, this is a spray that comes with the bottle. And it also, you know, you could unscrew this and it comes with its kind of classic stopper that, you know, that we have with the magnet now made with a magnet for the, uh, the new de parfums, but back in the day it used to be a screwable, uh, screw. So it comes with both of them. And this is all I have left. Look at that. Not even half a bottle left. Ah, you could say almost half a bottle left. This, this little thing is a miracle. 
And the more I smell it, the, the warmer, the more sophisticated it gets, the more complex it gets. It's just, wow. So I hope that one day I get a chance, you know, in 2018, I can start buying stuff again. Um, one of my subscribers, thank you so much, has actually offered me help in getting one of these next year, if they're still available. Um, they have been, I've been told, reproduced as eau de parfums for a limited time. I was told 300 bottles were produced because Eau Noir was discontinued and then brought back as Eau de Parfum uh, in this 300 copies version. Not available in every country, but you could check that your online website. No, I'm giving it away so by the time I can purchase one, they're all going to be sold out. There you go, Jacob. Well played. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's just so beautiful. I mean, I've said so much about this perfume in my last month's favorites, but also in my review of Au Noir, um, it's magical. It's really, I mean, there's there's vanilla in there, there's licorice in there, there's a lavender in there that is not metallic at all. It's dry and, and almost fluffy and furry. And every little follicle or, or every little hair on top of that lavender has oil in it. And that's how rich and dense it smells. It's it's intoxicating, really. And you don't get compliments when you wear this one. You don't. I think it's... But you also... I never get reaction of people like going like, oof, that's too much, you know. If I wear Sauvage, usually people go... But this one, you literally... When people are around me when I wear this one, they don't even dare say anything. They're just like... I see them change posture. They just become like more sophisticated themselves. You know, it's like, it's like this fragrance makes you become a better version of yourself. That's how freaking amazing it is. Anyway, and of course, we're going to bend the rules. Um, the sixth fragrance. And finally, after so much time, slowly but surely, you could have seen, noticed by this was the hint, we are going back to Chanel. Chanel is back this month around with number 19, the Eau de Toilette. Mm, there you have it. I'm using it a lot. You see, it's almost done, almost finished. Oh. Okay, so let me tell you how I use number 19 in November. <laughs> this is interesting, but I just like to feel... It's like because the mornings and the school and the routine, it's really tough on me. It's, it's a lot, a lot of hours and a lot to learn. So I get really exhausted. So you've noticed, I already mentioned, when I finish classes, I put uh, New Look 1947 to kind of freshen up. And I have the feeling, for me, in, in these autumn months, it's the opposite of summer, where I begin the, the day in summer, usually with fragrances that are more fresh, that kind of lighten up the mood and that refresh me throughout the day. In autumn, this year around, I have the feeling I'm, I start the morning with warmer fragrances that make me feel warm because I'm going out into the cold and damp climate outside. But then as the evening approaches, you know, late afternoon, evening approaches, I start wearing more fresh fragrances. And the cleanest fragrance, well, one of the cleanest fragrances I have is number 19, Eau de Toilette. So this one I literally put on late in the evening, right before I go to bed or when I go to bed. I just like to feel fresh in the evening, more so than feeling fresh. And I mean, of course, I take my shower every morning, duh, but I like to feel the heat nevertheless in the morning. And this one makes me feel like showered and fresh all over again as if it were summer in a weird way, even though this is more of a early autumn fragrance and it's, it smells really beautiful when you're wearing it outside when it's raining during the day. I kind of feel very nostalgic about it and I love to wear it at night. I just in November. So that that's my kind of special bonus feature for November. So there you have it guys. Let me get to your comments. So let's see what you're saying. Oh my god, so many comments. Ah, okay. Um Okay, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> There's so many guys. I love you so much. Thank you so much for sending all this love. Um Okay. So, uh Right. Which perfume was it that upset who? I don't know. Yes, the question was asked too long ago. Okay, but Wongoloid Wong says, what's your scent of the day? So uh, today I actually wore Eau Noir. Where is it? This one. This, this one is the one I'm wearing right now. 
Um, and usually when I put this one on, I don't switch around in the middle of the day with a new look because I don't want to cover up any molecule of this one. I want it to smell on me as long as it can because I know the Eau Cologne will never be produced again in its original formulation. So I don't want to cut it, its life shorter by spraying something on top of it. And even if sometimes I do, or I might spray something on top of it, this one still wiggles its way through to the top. It, it's, it's more intense than any other perfume you would put on top of this one. So, um, Monica Cherry, thank God you went back to intense fragrances. <laughs> yes, yes, true. Um, Homevid Mem says, Greeting from, greetings from Germany. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, Isaac says, hi, Mr. D, looking flawless as always. Well, thank you, Isaac. I had my beauty sleep, kind of. Um, Cardmaster, sophisticated like me, huh? Yes, of course, my dear, sophisticated like you. Melinda says, it sounds incredible. I'm a snake in Chinese astrology. Ooh, yes. I mean, I'm telling you, snakes are not bad. You just got to know how to deal with them. I mean, not with you, Melinda, obviously. I'm not, I don't mean you. I mean, snake, the animal, animal. Um, I actually worked with snakes, but that's maybe for another story, for another video. I, I did work with several types of, of snakes, and I find them incredible creatures, really. You just got to understand them. Cardmaster does not like snakery. LXW, just as I want to go to sleep, the amazing day of Go is live. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I'm keeping you from sleeping, but I'm sending you good vibes, good energy, so you can get like, you know, you can get all energized. So you need actually less hours of sleep. <laughs> um, Rob Rantoul says, very cooling. And Tichka, whoa, I need patchouli imperial after your description. You should definitely try it. Don't blind buy it because it's very pricey. I would like all of these, you know, limited edition luxury house fragrances. Don't blind buy them. They cost a lot of money. Um, smell them on your skin first, always, if you get a chance. If not, maybe find a way to get like a smaller, like a decant or something or a sample of them just to know if it fits your skin. You know, Emma loves new look 1947. She says it's so nice. Melinda loves opium. <laughs> Daniel says, the only opium pour homme available here is Eau de Toilette, and it's pathetic. I love the original, but the uh, but this one gives a brief memory of what it used to be, then reduces to the smell of chemicals. Sad, really. Yeah, the Eau de Toilette is really, a, it's just a shadow of what the Eau de Parfum used to be. Uh, Melinda is still trying to hunt down Eau Noir. She has to try it. Yes, Melinda, if you get a chance, please try it. It's, it's incredible. Antichka says Eau Noir is still available in France and Germany. Um, in Great Britain as well. I keep checking the American website and like it's not available, but um, what is available on the American Dior website that is not available on any European Dior website. So for all of you, for example, poison lovers out there, there is a pure perfume, like extract of poison, super rare, it's practically never available in Europe. I just saw it the other day, available for purchase on the Dior.com website. The beautiful, tiny, original round, you know, poison uh, bottle with a stopper, it's a splash, not a spray, 15 ml, with a golden thread around it. It's just to die for. So if you get a chance, I even never smelled that particular reformulation of the extract. I have the 80s original Pure Parfum, but I mean, I would love to have the, the extract of the perfume of poison, mm, but yeah, I'm not purchasing anything new. Uh, this year, so I'm probably gonna miss out on it. They come out in really limited editions, and then they sell out really quickly. So if anybody has the dough and the and the desire to have the purest essence of of poison, I think it's still available online. Um. Oh my God! Wait. Ah. <laughs> I I skipped a lot of these. Okay, Melinda says. 
I am on it. LOL. Yes, for au noir. Um, Daniel says, I have to dash off, alas, but I will watch uh, the replay if you can post it. Have a great telecast. Thank you, Daniel. Have a great day. Um, Linda says, number 19 is is so nice all year round for me. Yeah, me too. Especially the Eau de Toilette. I'm not a big fan of the Eau de Parfum, though. Just on my skin, but I love it on other people. Um... Shana says, is that a Mariner Link bracelet I see? It's uh, the chain something from Hermes. You can see it on my um, Instagram profile. Can you see this, guys? I wear this every day. E literally every freaking day. I have it on every day. And uh, what can I say about it? I just love it. It's just good energy. It gives me good energy. And I have this since now almost two years. And it's so easy to... See, you just take it off like that. And um, but I did the unboxing of this in a review, so yeah. I don't know the name of this one really. It's a complicated French name. <laughs> anyway, um Ramashka00, what is your favorite note in perfumes? Um my favorite note in perfumes. I love Opoponox. Uh, opoponox is such a mysterious ingredient. Uh, it is said to have, um, in ancient, ancient times, opoponox was almost, it was like used for rituals, special, um, like freeing from particular type of ghosts and spirits. And this is something they would use I think in Mesopotamia, we're talking centuries and centuries, thousands and thousands of years ago. And the Poponux just so happens to be one of the fundamental ingredients of poison, which is one of the reasons why I love poison so much, especially the Poponux in combination with plum. Super rare, very daring to combine those two, and that's the magical combination of poison in particular. But I love a Poponux. I love a good rose. And nobody does rose as well as Chanel. Um, I also love Bulgarian rose, and I love leather. So these are kind of the ingredients I like very much. I couldn't tell you which one I love the most, because that's hard to say, you know? It's not like I wear just one, a linear, like, one ingredient fragrance. They don't really exist, you know? Uh, but if I could... And I tried once, like just on my hand. It doesn't really work. But if I could like rub my body in, in, in roses, I would do that. You know, that's that the fragrance of a fresh rose. Oh, my God. That's the best. But it's never really synthesized properly. You can never really smell the beauty of the natural smell of a, of a natural rose. It's never the same when you when you synthesize it or, or concentrate it into into an essence or an oil. It, you, there's a memory of rose in it, and it's intense, yes, but it's not that delicate rose smell that that you get from from the rose flower, actually. And I all my life I've been hunting down the purest of roses, but I haven't found a fragrance yet that is as delicate as a rose, but but everlasting. Uh, do you prefer woody fresh or gourmand fragrances? It depends on the type, you know, time of the year, the mood I'm in. It really it changes a lot. Um, Melinda says, oh, so cool about working with snakes. I find them fascinating. <laughs> and Melinda, what? Poison extract. Ah, getting it. Yes, Melly, you should. I mean, I know you love poison. It's pricey because it's it tiny, but, you know. It's just so beautiful. And I really, really ask myself, you know, how is the packaging for this pure extract of poison? Because they only show the photo of the of the bottle on the Dior website. Ramashka says, Jacob, did you have any chance to stock up Chanel de Toilette perfumes? Yes, a year ago before they discontinued it. Um, like when I started warning you guys over a year ago, it was like, what, like almost two years ago, I started warning you to start stocking up. I started stocking up ages ago and I have a huge stock of, of the other toilets for sure. Like they'll never come back again. I had no choice. 
Oh, DP says, love you, Brazil. Oh, I love you too. And hello and a lot of love to Brazil. What a wonderful, wonderful country. An incredible, incredible Hartley people. Very passionate. Melinda says, we will share it then <laughs> when I get poisoned. Oh, be amazing. Thank you. And you're going to have to write me a detailed, into detailed description of how poison uh, the extract, the new formulation extract smells like. I'm dying to hear. Oh, Melinda is like a god. I love the bracelet that you're wearing. This one, I think this one um, is is available. It was, I mean, I, I got it a long time ago, but I, th I think it's available on the Hermes website under silver jewelry. They have like um, medium and large sizes. Oh, Rob, uh, Rob Rantoul says, how many sprays of Onwa do you rock? Okay. I do literally four on my chest, one here on my shaved side of my head. I love to shave it just to put more perfume on it. I lift here. I do one here. I do one on the back of my neck. I do like a long spray here. I do one here and then I do one here. I don't do anything in this area because I don't want to affect the jewelry. Sometimes I also wear rings. So this part of the body doesn't ha doesn't get anything. So it's a lot. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Today, 10, 10 sprays. And then sometimes on the t-shirt as well, you know, just like, so tops, 12, 12 sprays tops. Uh, DB says, do you know any perfume from Brazil? Natura have one with Castanha do Para note. Wonderful. Oh, that sounds amazing. No, but I don't know it. Melinda says, what is your favorite color for the rose flower? That's a tough one, Melly, because... Oh fuck! Now should I? Oh no! I said all these words are gonna they're gonna they're gonna demonetize me now. I remember my grandma, and that makes me so sad, uh, but also so happy. So I'm very conditioned by this. Her favorite uh, roses were yellow, yellow roses. So they're very rare. Yellow roses are not so common, and and funny enough, you know, in many instances, cultures, whatever societies, cities, blah blah. Yellow roses are not are, are not considered noble at all. They're considered more like uh, I don't want to say vulgar. A rose is never vulgar, but the, like a yellow rose isn't considered like this elegance. You know, usually there's the cliche of the rose rose, the red rose, the white rose. But she just loved yellow roses, and so they're, they're my favorite. That's my favorite rose, <laughs> the yellow rose. Um. So yeah, um, all right. So Melly says, oh, I will write you about poison. I will seriously save some for you. That's so sweet. Thank you, Melly. Uh, that's 10 sprays, Rob and Ruth with Onwa. Yeah, you must really know your classmates well. <laughs> yes, they're, they're really, I think they're enjoying it because, I mean, come on, it's, it's an incredible fragrance. And I think, you know, after so many weeks of spending so much time together, uh, they got to know me more and more, and we exchanged a lot of information. And and they they know that my character is kind of very layered and textured. So the fragrance adds to the character, and uh, it enriches the experience of exchanging information with one another. And I've noticed that since I've been kind of pushing more whatever I you know that they're kind of also more fragranced lately. And I'm loving it. I'm loving that the people are just opening up more, you know? Um, Melinda says, yellow for friendships, red for love. Yeah. <laughs> Melinda says, I made you swear. <laughs> oh, Melinda also loves yellow roses. Yay, we got something in common. Um, Paula says, Claire, say hello. Wait, what do you mean? Claire? Is Claire online right now? Who's Claire? <laughs> Which Claire are we talking about? Because there's like, I know a Claire. Ramashka says, we know that you love uh, fashion. What is your recommendation regarding the purchase of one or two designer bags? What brand you would pick? I know you like Chanel, but what about Gucci or Louis Vuitton? Gucci? No, no, no. Alessandro Michela, I've said this before and I'm mentioning it again, guys. I know this video is about perfume, so let's not dwell too much into it. I have to make another video on that topic, but he's a stylist. He's not a designer, in my opinion. 
Uh, Louis Vuitton, yes. Vintage and used. I love Murakami for Louis Vuitton. I've heard that he's coming back with another collaboration for them. I don't know about, I don't know any information about it. I've just heard that he's coming back, or allegedly. But, uh, oh, the cherries, you know, that's the love of my life. The Louis Vuitton uh, with Takashi Murakami cherries collection. Love that one. If you can hunt down the Speedy or the Keepall, those are amazing. But generally, just the classic Louis Vuitton bags, like nothing, nothing too special, you know, the 25 Speedy that was made for Audrey Hepburn. Or um, um, the Alma uh, bag, which was made for Coco Chanel, believe it or not. So th those are the ones I would go for. Um, love is who I am. How are you doing, sweetie? Uh, hello, everyone. Sorry that I'm late. <laughs> Rada says, do you fear going bald? Like, have nightmares about going through out life without a full head of hair? No. But I see, I actually love shaving my hair off, so I'm not obsessed with hair. Uh, I mean, I like hair, but I've seen some very, very, very beautiful bald heads, actually. Extremely beautiful bald heads. So mm, you got to embrace what nature gives you. But no, I don't fear balding at all. But maybe I don't fear balding because I'm not balding. I don't know how it is, you know, like... I mean, some of my colleagues, of my friends from like back in high school, I mean, they, it's a gene thing, you know, they were already like uh, nine, 18, 19, they were already balding. And at the, at like at 20, done. But I also, you know, some people like uh, turn white really, really early on, like in their teens already when they're teenagers. So it, it's just nature. That's how the genes work and I don't think we should see it as a negative or a positive it's just the way it is everybody's different that's fine you know what I mean I don't know ah Emilio Emilio's late how you doing sweetie no you're not late you could check it out later from the beginning if you want to see the list of the perfumes um ah Paula says yes yeah, Claire all righty lots of love to you too guys <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your travels through the world. So yes, I was. I thought it was the real Claire, and it is the real Claire. Uh, Paolo, don't give away too much. Don't write all, all your person. Your <laughs> he's like writing his name and everything. This is YouTube. You gotta like you know your identity is. You got. You have to protect. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, uh, Paolo, you're amazing. Let me just tell you one thing I, I'm, I am allowed to say about Paul. An incredible musician. That's all I got to say. Ramashka OO. Why not Gucci? By the way, love your hairstyle. Thank you so much. Gucci, I say no. Because if you want Gucci, buy a vintage Gucci bag. Don't buy the new stuff that's out right now. Because it's so temporary. You're going to invest so much money into it. And you're going to get bored of it in like three or four years. You know, when I buy something luxurious and so beautiful that I'm in love with, I want to love it in 20 years. You see what I mean? Like, think about, don't fall victim to the trends of the moment, but really understand and ask yourself, why do you want or need a particular piece in your life? And make it very clear that you're not wanting to get that piece because you've been brainwashed by the marketing of the brand that's investing millions in the marketing of a certain product to want to brainwash you into thinking that you need it. And don't forget the thousands of dollars that you're spending for that bag. Over 50% of that money is going to go back into the marketing and the advertisement campaigns, which will be used subsequently into brainwashing you further into needing and wanting that bag. Yeah, you know, mm -mm. I, I mean, it's hard. I myself have to fight against those strategies over and over and over again, but I'm actively awake and I slap myself in the face psychologically just to remember, remind myself that no, I will not let these strategies get to me, you know? So yes, if there is somebody who really has a real, really good reason and a love for a particular bag made now during Alessandro Michele's reign over Gucci, go ahead. I'm not saying it's all bad, you know? 
but just be sure that the reasons why you're purchasing a product that is so expensive are really, really good reasons because you want to love that piece, you know, for many, many years to come. You don't want to just get bored of it after a couple of years after it's out of style, you know. I would never spend so much money into a luxury piece that is just fashion. It has to have style. And as Coco says, style is forever and fashion is fleeting. Um, Rob Randall says, I have to confess, I'd be more comfortable with gray than bald. <laughs> Somebody's obsessed with balding. Why are you so obsessed with balding? Are you balding by any chance? Is it a problem? Don't worry about it. In case you are, embrace it. Don't worry about it. Eddie says, hey, Deco, what do you think are good fragrances for men? Any fragrance that really smells good on your skin. It's there, You can't generalize these things. You got to try stuff out. You got to leave it on your skin for at least 40 minutes and then smell the dry down. If the dry down makes you fall in love with the fragrance, that's the fragrance for you. Don't trust too much the opening head notes of a fragrance because those are fleeting. They're just like the fashion moment. They're going to be gone soon. But it's the dry down that stays that really shows you the style of a fragrance. So if the dry down is something you love on your skin, that's the perfume for you. Alex says, hello. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? Ramashka says, do you like uh, Joe Malone perfumes? The concept of mixing and matching them is kind of fun to me, but I never really purchased them. I have a couple of samples. I mean, I, I wouldn't buy them, but they're okay. You know. I mean, you says, definitely going to check the list. Just came out of the shower and showered myself with D&G Pour Homme. Oh, wonderful. Emilio just posted on his Instagram that he has finally tested for us the newly reformulated Dolce Gabbana by Shiseido. Finally, they're not producing with Procter & Gamble made in England anymore, but they have moved production to France. And apparently, as Emilio stated, a reformulation has taken place. So I cannot wait to try Dolce Gabbana Pour Homme made in France. Eddie says, thanks, Jacob. You're welcome, Eddie. And Love is Who I Am says, when we'll have another live with Jacob involving champagne? <laughs> and who shall our special guest be? Oh, that's coming soon, too, especially now that I'm testing this new camera situation. Let's see how this develops and how the internet works in my favor. Um, because, you know, I would like to do some champagne, darling, moments with you guys. So, wow, this was a really long video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let's cut it here. Let's cut it short. Uh, I hope you've really had a lot of fun. Um, I did because I can finally kind of see more what I'm what I'm doing. Who is I? Oh, <laughs> Let's fix there. Yes. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, oh, I'm send his kisses. Kisses to you too, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thumb up this video if you like it. I can't see any thumbs because I literally only see the oh ten thumbs up. You could do better than that, guys. Thumb up this video. Show the love. If you love the video, thumb it up. I need the love. I need the love. Let's show YouTube that they cannot just demonetize us because we love what we watch. They've demonetized, like, my videos again. And then I had to, uh, the other two I just posted a couple of days ago. Then I had to ask again for a manual review. And then again, 24 hours later, they were re-monetized. It's still a big mess. So I have the feeling with more thumbs up, um, you kind of push yourself up on the credibility standard for these bots on YouTube. I don't know what it is. And then like kind of, they kind of get the message <laughs> that you're making content that is not hate speech. I don't know what. So anyway. Oh, yes. Look at those thumbs up flying up. Woo. Thank you so much, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in again. I love you so much. The energy is always incredible. Um, oh, Melly, love you, Jacob. Love you too, sweetie. See you soon. I'm going to live stream as soon as I can again, as soon as I'm back in, invigorated. Like when I, I have absolutely no social life. I literally come home, eat, go to bed, wake up in the morning, go back to school, work, 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 work. Not a Rihanna uh, <laughs> quote, but work, 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 work. And then uh, food, sleep, and then film, film, film. And... I have been sprinkling this information throughout. Here's another little hint. There is a new project coming up with time, and pretty soon you will be seeing more. It's not something that has to do with YouTube directly, but I will be showing snippets of something that I've been working on very intensely since a couple of months. 
um, hints, bits and bobs on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. I am ecstatic about it to a degree of like being all giddy. <laughs> it's, it's super exciting and I cannot wait to be able to tell you more. Um, but right now I can't because I am contractually obliged not to speak. Like I can say this, but I cannot say more for now. So stay tuned for that. Love you so much. Take care. See you soon. Mwah. Never give up on love. <laughs> I was gonna forget that. I was like, I love that. Blah, 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 blah. Don't ever forget to never give up on love. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye.